Hey everyone, so today's a long-awaited video where I'm answering some of you all's question, one of the question that I get a lot, and that's how do I actually get started in quantum computing? And let me tell you, there's opportunities really for everyone, no matter what stage you are in your career. Quantum computing is really growing, and so because of that, we need a lot of different people with a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different skill sets to actually help us commercialize quantum computing. So the first thing I want to answer is if you're in college and you want to go into quantum computing, what fields should you study? What should your major actually be? Should you study physics, computer science, electrical engineering? What should you actually do? And obviously for some of these, maybe if you are doing physics, you may have to code a little bit. Or if you're doing computer science and you want to work in quantum computing, obviously you'll have to learn the quantum computing terms. But you should really think about what you want to spend the majority of your time doing. Do you want to do theoretical physics, experimental physics, or do you want to be in the code all day actually building out the quantum computing platform? And honestly, I can't answer that question for you. So I personally studied physics for my undergrad and when I went to graduate school, and I really enjoyed that and I think I got a lot out of it. And then I self-taught computer science over time and now I spend a lot of time coding and I love that as well. If you want to do more research-based things in quantum computing directly on the experimental side, physics is one of the best places to be or electrical engineering. But if you want to work more on the platform side and maybe want a broader skill set, maybe computer science will work for you. Whichever one you pick, I definitely would recommend if you're in college, try and taking some of these quantum classes. Take quantum mechanics one and two and take a quantum computing class if you have that at your university. And as you start exploring these different majors, go to quantumcomputingreport.com and actually go and look at all those different quantum companies out there and take a look at their job descriptions and see who they're hiring and see what kind of skill sets they want you to have. And make sure that you're in college, you're building up those skill sets over time to get to where you want to be in the quantum computing industry. But honestly, the majority opinion, if you know directly you want to do quantum computing, you should study physics. What you'll learn over time is you have to take the four pillars of physics. So you have to take classical mechanics, you have to take quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, and thermo and statistical mechanics. So you'll take all those sets of classes before you can get to your upper level classes. So if you are doing a physics degree, what your degree will look like is you'll take the math classes, the undergraduate basic level, physics one, two, maybe three, depending on your university. And then after that, you can actually get to upper level classes. So for example, if you wanted to do more quantum telecommunication with neutral atoms, Above that, on the electives, you can take atomic physics. If you want to go into more superconducting qubits, you can take solid state classes and you can build your degree depending on kind of the future that you want to work in in quantum computing. And honestly, I do recommend that pretty much everyone takes computer science classes. I think the skill set is crucial for everyone going to college or anyone these days because all jobs are using computers and simulations and knowing a bit of coding never hurts. But I've seen people come from math degrees and computer science degrees and electrical engineering degrees into quantum computing. They're just using their skill sets a little bit differently. So for example, the math majors I know, they're doing a little bit more theoretical quantum computing work. So maybe they wanna do more stuff with quantum error correction or for example, more uh, theoretical work on complexity theory. And let me tell you, engineers of all types are very useful in quantum computing. So for example, nanofabrication engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, all of those types of engineers are needed to actually be able to commercialize quantum computing and they're being hired in these companies. So don't look at only the physics job descriptions, make sure and look at all the other ones because maybe you'll actually like that type of work a lot more. So the number two thing to get into quantum computing, especially if you're in college, I would really recommend taking advantage of this, is actually to get as much research experience as you can. If you go to a research university, that's kind of the core of what the university is about. And a lot of professors spent most of their time doing research. So if you can join a lab group very early on and get that mentorship, that'll be amazing for your long-term career. And you'll also figure out if you actually want to do this your entire life. So I made a whole video about your PhD application and talked a little bit about doing research and how to actually get a research position. But it's as simple sometimes as emailing a professor you want to work with and saying, hey, I've taken these classes in 
quantum mechanics or I know how to code or for me for example when I applied I said I know how to solder that was kind of my skill set that I could bring to the lab do you have a research position available can you take me in and some labs don't have the resources for that at that point because they need more grad students but a lot of lab groups actually end up taking undergraduates now I understand that not all universities have this and I talked a bit in that video as well about some undergraduate research programs where for the summer you can go to another university and get research experience. I would really recommend looking for these opportunities because again, research is so fundamental. And if you want to go to graduate school and get really deep and get that PhD, then that research experience will really help with your application. And not all jobs require a PhD, but again, if you're wanting to work more on the theoretical side and really push the edge of the research, usually a PhD is required. But again, check those job descriptions for what you want to do. Now, what if you don't go to a research university and you can't go somewhere during the summer or you've already graduated college and you don't have those opportunities? What can you do to get experience on quantum computing to actually switch into the field? One of the coolest thing about quantum computing right now is that chips are being put in the cloud. And this is something that I didn't have access to 12 years ago when I was an undergrad 13. 13 maybe years ago now, when I was an undergrad, there were no quantum chips in the cloud. So I had to be at a research university and had to be in the lab to gain access to these systems. But that's not true anymore. Amazon, Google, they're all putting all their quantum chips in the cloud and anyone can access them for even for free. Even if you don't have any money, you can do that. And so I'd really recommend actually doing projects with quantum computing. Now there's a couple textbooks that I've covered in some of my other videos and they have example problems, but for example, a good sample problem to do is quantum super dense coding. That's a very basic quantum computing idea, but it will introduce you to quantum gates and actually coding in this quantum language that you're gonna look at. And as you learn more, and as you're going through these textbooks, you can build more and more complex problems. If you're not sure what to do for higher level projects, actually check out my video here where I talk a little bit about some project ideas for doing quantum computing. And if you do these projects, I'd also really recommend blogging about it or putting it up on GitHub and making sure you're building your portfolio of quantum computing projects. I think this is really important, not only for getting into the quantum community, but also you can kind of solidify your knowledge because when you have to write things down, understand those concepts and again sharing it online maybe somebody will see it who works for a quantum computing company and wants to hire you so it's always great to have those projects so another question that I get asked here is what programming language should I learn for quantum computing I mean there seems like there's so many out there right now there's obviously the main ones that are built on Python frameworks such as Qiskit and circ there are also standalone programming languages like Q sharp from Microsoft and silk out of Zurich and you can also study those as well. But my recommendation is if you're just getting into computer science or if you already know Python, just use a Python framework or use even quantum assembly if you're really just getting into programming because then you don't have to learn the nuances of a very complicated language as you're trying to learn the quantum computing concepts. In the end, when you actually look at these languages, especially the Python frameworks, they're pretty similar. So switching from one to another isn't that big of a problem. And I say this for computer scientists as well, right? Just because you know Java doesn't mean you can't be good at Golang or C++. There's gonna be a little bit of a difference, but you've learned the logic already. So switching that syntax and just learning the nuances of the new language isn't that hard. Of course, this is a little different if you wanna work with quantum annealers versus universal gate quantum computers, then the designs are completely different. So it'd be more like if you were gonna learn JavaScript after learning Java. And let me tell you as a backend engineer, I have a very hard time learning JavaScript because they're just such different languages. And that's the same thing here between annealers and universal gate systems. So another question I get asked is how do I keep up with the research in the field? And there's a couple ways I do that, but let me tell you, number one, archive is the secret sauce. It's this website where people put up preprints of scientific articles that are about to be published or have just been published. There's also a couple newsletters that I subscribe to. So one of them is called the quantum daily, which has a lot of quantum news. They cover some papers and then just quantum industry news. So you can learn a lot about which companies are out there, who's hiring, for example. There's also 
also a couple other newsletters and I'll pop them names up here. So the Quantum Hub, I get a daily email from, but another one that I really wanna shout out is the USRA newsletter. It's from the USRA Research Institute for Advanced Computer Science. And once a month they have a newsletter on NISC era quantum computing. And they list a bunch of papers that came out from everywhere, not even their, just their research group. And it has some top quality papers that they pick. And by the way, I'm gonna provide all the links to the newsletters and the websites I mentioned down below. Another thing that I do is actually follow people on Twitter and I follow a bunch of people in the quantum space and quantum companies because they're gonna tweet about it when they have some new cool research that came out. So if you're interested in quantum computing, make sure to follow those accounts. If you don't know where to start, actually go to my Twitter account. Again, I'll link that below and see who I'm following because I follow a lot of quantum people in the field and you can check out all their work and all their tweets and follow the ones that you're interested in. If you keep checking and reading over time, you'll kind of see how the field is progressing and you'll see all these different people and all the research that they're publishing. And I think social media is a great resource to actually keep up to date with a lot of research. So number five, is self-studying possible to get into the quantum field or do you need a PhD? Now I know it seems overwhelming, especially when you're reading all these papers and you're looking at it and you're going, oh, I don't know any of these words. I feel like I need to go back to school for 10 years, but that's really not necessary. I've talked about the fact that quantum computing is being commercialized and actually a lot of quantum companies have less physicists and actually more engineers and other staff to actually be able to commercialize quantum computing. Honestly, take a look at your skill sets and see what you can contribute. If you're computer scientists, well, you are gonna know a lot of these coding things and maybe it's better for you to enter the industry by actually building the platform, even if eventually you wanna do theoretical physics. You can join a quantum computing company and actually help them out with their research, learn quantum computing along the way, and then maybe move into problems that you yourself find more interesting. This is again where I say, go back to all those quantum computing jobs, go back and take a look at your dream job and look at what skills they require. Nothing is impossible in my opinion. You just have to work hard and also make sure that you understand what skill sets are needed to actually get a job that you want in the field. Now for you, self-studying may take a different form than someone else. Someone may want to go back to school because that's how they learn best. Someone else may want to take a look at some of the textbooks and self-study and use your skills, for example, in computer science programming, self-teaching quantum, and then join a company like that. But even for non-technical people, it's possible to get into quantum computing I mean, we still need product managers and marketing folks and other people to help with the quantum computing company. So always make sure, even if you are not a technical person, maybe you worked for a machine learning company and you're a product manager. There's a lot of similarities in managing different technical teams and products for different technologies. And so maybe you can leverage that and say that, hey, yeah, I've never done quantum computing, but I've done AI and machine learning and I have experience in that, which means I can understand some things and and here's some interest that I have in quantum computing and why I'm interested. You can approach it from the book side, you can approach it from the degree side, you can approach it from the online course side, but really just make sure to show interest that you wanna get into quantum computing because that will put you a foot above the rest when someone's looking at your application. These projects that you've done, these blog posts are really crucial for showing interest in the field. So make sure to do that. So again, I wanna emphasize that nothing is impossible. You can do quantum computing on your own because we now do have these cloud systems that we didn't have 10 years ago. So you really do have a lot of access right now that 10 years ago, someone wouldn't have had the access to. And you should really take advantage of those self-studying and project-based things and make sure that you take the time and actually go straight into it. I'm not gonna promise that you can get a quantum computing job in four weeks. That's probably unlikely. If you have a really good skill set in computer science or mechanical engineering, but have never touched quantum, you know, you can get hired. But again, if you show that interest in quantum computing, do some self-teaching, that's always gonna help your application more. So let me know if you have any other questions here. I try to answer the big looming questions I get all the time about the college degrees, the self-studying, the programming language. So I hope this helped you out. And if it did, please subscribe and like this video. I'd really appreciate it.